web development. Whether you're a beginner or dreaming of swimming in that six-figure salary or just curious about how websites are made, this video will provide you with the fundamental knowledge you need to get started making websites. So grab your favorite day in the life video and sit back and let's explore the world of web development together. Before we start developing our own website, let's talk about what web development actually is. As in the name, web development is the process of creating websites and web applications. It involves a lot of various technologies and programming languages that work together to build the digital experiences that we encounter every single day. It's the reason you can laugh at a cat video, you know, order DoorDash at 3 a.m., or watch TikToks with Subway Surfers gameplay at the bottom. And luckily for you guys, in this series, I'm gonna walk you through the absolute essentials that you'll need for web development. So starting off, let's talk about the two parts of web development. From a high level standpoint, web development consists of two parts, the front end, or also known as the client, and the back end, also known as the server. I'm going to use Reddit and Twitter as some examples for this. Whenever we talk about the front end, we're referring to the design and layout of a website. So we're essentially talking about the look and feel. For example, let's look at Reddit's old web design. A lot of people didn't really like the design, so a lot of third party apps like Apollo were created in order to improve Reddit's front end. As for the back end, it's all about how websites store their data and then send that data to the front end. This is where a lot of technologies like databases, APIs, and other various programming languages come into play. Going back to Reddit, as a lot of you heard, Reddit's recently changed their API pricing, and that change caused a lot of issues within the community. And this change negatively impacts a lot of the third-party applications that I mentioned, such as Apollo, since it's become quite an issue to afford Reddit's API. Another example is Twitter's recent implementation of rate limiting which controls how many tweets you can see a day. Both of these examples are back-end decisions, and these decisions have a significant impact on the user experience. And when you combine both the front-end and the back-end, you get what's known as full-stack development. As we continue along in the series, you'll see how interconnected these two parts of web development are, and how the decisions of the back-end can affect the front-end and vice versa. All right, I think that's enough explanation for now, since you guys are probably like, well, that's cool and all, but how do I even start coding to make a website? In order to start writing code, we're gonna be using something called an integrated development environment, which is also known as an IDE. And it's also known as a code editor, and this will be our main tool for programming. I recommend using Visual Studio Code or VS Code, but there's also other code editors such as Sublime Text, and if you're feeling really bold, Vim. For this series, I'll be using VS Code as the IDE. To get started, click the link in the description below to download VS Code, or just go to Google and just type VS Code and click the download link on the VS Code website. Once you're there, download VS Code on whatever operating system you're using. Now that you've downloaded VS Code, let's start making our first website. So open up VS Code, go to the icon labeled Extensions. Once you're there, in the search bar, type in Live Server. Click the install button, and once that's complete, you should see an icon in the bottom right corner that says go live. If you see that, then that means you have it installed. Once you have that extension installed, create a new folder wherever you want, whether that's in your desktop, your downloads, and name that folder my underscore first underscore website, and then open this folder in VS Code. Now that you're there, create a new file and name that index.html. Now make sure to spell this correctly. This name is mandatory. This file serves as the entry point of your website. If you name it anything else, the browser won't understand. Now go into the index.html file and type exclamation point, and then you'll see some autocomplete suggestions. Click the first one. And once you do that, you'll see that the file has been filled out. Now I want you to go into that area that says body. What you're looking at is a bunch of HTML tags. So I want you to create your own tag real quick. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this tag H1 for our heading. And then inside of our H1 tag, type in whatever you want. And then once you're done with that, add a closing tag to it. Now that you're done with that, save the file either with Control S or Command S, and then click the go live button. And once you do that, the browser should open up your very first website. Congratulations, you've just created your first website. You're now one step closer to becoming a software engineer. 
In the next video, we'll dive deeper into this index.html file and start talking about HTML to start understanding what you're even looking at. And then we'll also start designing the file with CSS since it's currently not the prettiest. And by the end of it, we should have a copy of Google's homepage. And that wraps up our introduction to web development. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe for more. If you have any questions or feedback, don't hesitate to drop a comment down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video about HTML and CSS. So see ya.